Welcome to section four, cost optimization. In this section, we're going to have a look at three different components. Firstly, we're going to take a look at how we can group our AWS resources together. Next, we're going to look at budget allocation and cost control before moving on to resource sizing and how we can make sure that we scale our resources in when we no longer need them. Welcome to video one, resource groups. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can group our resources together in a logical fashion in order to make budgeting and management much, much easier. So firstly, let's take a step back and review why we need to do this. Well, AWS is really, really big and really, really complicated. So this map here shows all the AWS regions that are currently available to, for you to use infrastructure on. So the orange circles represent regions that are currently online and the green circles represent ones which are currently being built and will be available soon. And the numbers inside those circles represent the number of availability zones that they have. So we can see here on the east coast of the US alone, we have 11 different availability zones. That's 11 different data centers for you to choose from that you can put your instances and your resources in. Combine that with the eight that we have on the west coast, and that's 19 AWS data centers in the US mainland alone. And on top of that, Amazon have hundreds, literally hundreds of products and services available to you. And you can see here from this screenshot, there really is a huge variety of products and services on the AWS ecosystem. I've just expanded the compute one here, and you can see even for compute, we have nine different options. We've got EC2 that we know about, we've got LightSail, we've got Elastic Beanstalk, we've got the container registry, we've got VPCs, we've got Lambda, we've got auto scaling, we've got batch, we've got the container service, and all of these other categories have a large number of services available within them as well. So AWS is really, really big and really, really complicated. In fact, there are actually 44 availability zones currently online with AWS, and there are 17 more coming soon. And by coming soon, I mean in the next six to 12 months. So AWS is big and growing fast. Now, those 44 availability zones are currently spread across 16 geographic regions, with another six coming in the next 12 months. Each of those regions has over 100 products and services available for you, and each region, service, and product combination unique pricing. So EC2 instances in Japan do not cost the same as EC2 instances on the US East Coast, which do not cost the same as EC2 instances on the US West Coast. And that's the same for all AWS products. Each product has its own price per region. So that means there's literally, literally thousands of entries on the AWS price list. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means that pricing and budgeting gets really complicated really, really fast. So Amazon gives you a per service breakdown of your bill, along with a projection of how much they think you're going to spend on your next month's billing based on what you're currently using. Now that's all very well and good. And we've got a screenshot here on the left-hand side of a monthly spend. And we can see here it's broken down by resource type. But what happens if you've got multiple applications or even multiple departments running applications on your account? And how do you work out the budget per application if you're just given the spend that you have on EC2 instances, for example? You'll just see that you've spent $1,000 on EC2 instances, but you don't know which department has spent that money. Well, Amazon has a solution for you, and it's called tagging. So tags are used to categorize your AWS resources in different ways, for example, by owner, by purpose, or by environment. And this is really useful when you have lots of resources, particularly when you have lots of resources of the same type. So each tag consists of a key and optional value, for example, project name and my project, resource name, my web server. And tags have actually no semantic meaning to AWS, so you can literally define them as and how you like. And you can also add, modify, or delete any time. So it's Amazon's way of giving you the ability to specify metadata about your AWS resources. So tags are really just simple key value pairs that act as metadata for your infrastructure. You can assign them as you see fit, and they're used to help create resource groups as well as for billing. So we've got a simple example here on the left-hand side. We've set the owner to DB admin. We've set the stack to test. And those are keys that we define and values that we define. So you could put anything you like here. 
You could put Donald and Trump if you so desire. And likewise for this other instance, the owner is DB admin, but the stack for this one is production. So in AWS, a resource is any entity that you work with. It could be an EC2 instance, an Amazon S3 bucket, a DynamoDB table, a Route 53 entry, anything, anything that you work with that you have to pay for. So resource grouping allows you to create a custom console that consolidates information based on the project and resources that it uses, even across multiple regions. So this is a really, really powerful feature, particularly if you're running an application that encompasses lots of products and services across multiple AWS regions. And resource groups work by allowing you to identify resources that share one or more common tags. For example, you could deploy your application in multiple regions, multiple data centers, using 10 different Amazon services, but all of them have a tag with the key application name and the value my application name. And then you can create a resource group based on that. So this can be really, really helpful for updating or deleting groups from infrastructure in one shot. So imagine you want to redeploy your entire stack globally. You can do that and you can just automatically set it to delete everything in your resource group without you having to manually go through and figure out what you've got. And this is what it looks like. So resource grouping is an extremely powerful way to collect disparate components of a distributed system, including collecting cross-regional resources in one place, which is not something AWS otherwise supports out of the box. You have to click the little drop down in the top right hand corner and go through each of the regions one by one to figure out what you've got. This is also then reflected on your bill. For example, group by department or project. And we can see on the left-hand side a very simple example of what that might look like. 